OP6, this is command. S2 reports that your AOR is the subject of increased net chatter. Possible IEDs. Keep a sharp eye. Over. Delta-1, your AR is updated. Proceed as instructed. Switch to AR. Target's located. Roger. Let's go. Ma'am, that cell phone could be her trigger. That's all I need to see, Lieutenant. Shut her down. Yes, ma'am. Man, this is Delta One. Target in sight. One bad guy. Zero friendly is over. Understood. Stand by for signal, Delta One. Lieutenant, shut down all signals. Electronic countermeasures are active. Shutting down all signals, ma'am. Delta One, you're a go. Drop the phone! Drop the phone! Get your hands up! Get down on the ground! Get down on the ground! Command, this is Delta One. Area secure, over. The day is not over. Stay alert. We still got work to do. Over. training systems throughout the Navy. Um, we're still using a lot of legacy traditional training methodologies. Um, we have limited time to get sailors the, the training that they need and augmented and virtual reality technologies and some of the emerging peripheral devices and, and capabilities that come along with those are going to allow for training scenarios that we've never been able to train to before. So this augmented um, reality um, virtual training environment that they're um, providing to us this capability um, we can immerse into our existing curriculum um, and what it does is allows us to be um, very reconfigurable um, at a moment's notice. Basically, we can go in and we can change the scenarios. We can change the threat that they uh, pose. So I think that's really where this technology and this capability moves things a step ahead because the ability for us to quickly uh, sort of create a scenario, modify the different uh, agents that are in there, change their behavioral outcomes to trigger different events during the scenario based on what the, the trainers are observing, um, really creates this dynamic training experience. I would say it, it's going to bring a lot of value to our training because you can immediately redo a scenario, putting people into them, uh, getting sailors to run through those scenarios and rebuilding them and everything that you need to do to conduct training. ONR Tech Solutions has been a really great opportunity for myself and my team at Dahlgren. I'm used to going through more traditional sort of funding sources, but ONR Tech Solutions has definitely felt like a very unique experience. Well, I was a little skeptical at first. You know, I'm a, I'm a live fire, hands-on person, but doing this job I've seen a lot more technology really being advanced over the last couple of years. I put the equipment on yesterday and just being immersed in the environment, you really get pulled in pretty quickly um, and really thinking that you're within the, the virtual environment or the augmented environment. Going into or being outside of the room before you enter the room, so it's almost going from a different world from the outside and then you step into the room where you guys set up the AR and you can see everything. So you can kind of put yourself in a whole other world once you step into the room, so it's pretty neat. And you actually get to move around and uh, scan around and see people as you scan, so it's pretty, pretty cool. And if you, you know, ask them task directions, say, "Hey, get on the ground" or something like that, they actually do respond and they will get down, which is pretty awesome. It's been a great opportunity working for the Office of Naval Research to support the Center for Security Forces in developing this new training solution. It's also given us a tremendous opportunity to partner with industry like Magic Leap Horizons with our DOD uh, collaborators with the Dismounted Soldier Training Group and also to uh, invest in and help grow small businesses like Haptech. 
and I think if we continue to submit our ideas and you know ONR can continue to kind of build off them and improve, I think it'll it'll be good for our sailors and our securities. and head mounted display. You've now joined me in the full virtual world. Take a look around. Notice that you have the same helm controls on the physical touch screen. The plain sheet of glass to your left has been transformed into another control surface. Want a bird's eye view? Press the crow's nest button to your left. Uh-oh. You are now seeing a synthetic view from the radar mast. Take a look down and over your shoulder for a view of the full ship. You still have the same control capabilities up here. And I'm here too, on your left. We're airborne. First, select a helm. Now, select a throttle. You can move the controls wherever you want by dragging the window headers. Try out the throttle and helm. These are some near-term augmented and virtual capabilities. To explore further, let's go fully immersive. Please put on the tracked gloves and head-mounted display. Looks like we've got a fire in engine room one. You can touch the personnel icon to get direct comms with the sailors. We've identified a fuel leak and the point source of the fire. Machinists made Cabrio is apparently unconscious near the exit hatch. The robot has a fire. Sensors indicate no Select a helm. Now, select a throttle. You can move the controls wherever you want by dragging the window headers. Try out the throttle. Go fully immersive. Please put on the tracked gloves and head mounted display. You've now joined me in the full control surface. Want a bird's eye view? 
press the crow's nest button to your left. Uh-oh. You are now seeing a synthetic view from the radar mast. Take a look down and over. Going virtual allows us to be anywhere and bring capabilities in and out as needed. Plus, we will be able to pull in live video feeds and other sensor data from the real world. We're airborne. Switching to immersive view from the platform center as soon as we're in range. The UAS loud hailer now. The pirates appear to be turning away from the fray comms with the sailors. No response. Uh, yellow. Yellow? There's too much smoke to get inside. The fire suppressant is toxic and...